Hello everybody, it's Travis Blaze here at Sketch to Animate for another Draw Over Monday. It is 6.13, we're about 13 minutes behind schedule, but that's okay, because we're here now. I hope everyone is doing great because we've got a lot of awesome stuff happening uh, in the works with Sketch to Animate. Uh, first and foremost, I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. I actually had a somewhat normal weekend. Uh, I wasn't killing myself too much with, with a lot of work. I actually took uh, some time off. Uh, we've got some great things happening with uh, Sketch to Animate's first event, uh, which we'll, we'll do an announcement soon. And um, I'm trying to think what else has been going on lately. Uh, oh, I'm getting my first vaccination shot tomorrow. So that's, that's kind of a big deal. Um, uh, State of Washington's kind of got their act together. And because I am 50 and uh, with younger kids in the house and around elderly people, um, not that I'm elderly, but um, I qualify to get the, the shot. So ironically, surprisingly, I was able, because it's fast, t the spots are taken up, I'm going to get my first dose tomorrow morning. And then the second dose I'll get uh, on the 22nd. So yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I've never been vaccinated other than the normal shots when you're a kid, but I never get the flu shot, never get all that stuff. But I thought, you know what? Why not? I'll do it. Uh, especially since I've seen everyone around us uh, get it and uh, Wink has had it twice. So um, yeah, so there's that. So um, yeah, I was, I was really, really fortunate. Um, uh, they're just starting to kind of wheel it out to the general public here. Um, so um, every state's different. Some states are way behind. Um, I think every state's pretty much behind on things like this. But uh, it, was, it was since I, I kind of qualified in that area, uh, I thought it would be safe to, to take it on. So there you go. Um, I, know, I know Chocho's uh, parents have gotten the shots, the vaccination shots. So they're, they're good to go. So that was, you know, they're in their 70s. So um, that, was, that was good for them. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to switch it over to uh, the Skype call. Which one is, uh, is it that one? I think it's this one. Hopefully it's not the one with the unicorn. So, not that I don't love spring. Uh, it isn't. So there you go. Hey, Wink. Hello. Hey, can we hear you? Let's see, let's start talking. Hello hello hello. hello, 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 hello. How is everybody doing out there? Um, can everyone hear us okay? Um, how's the chat? I think so. Yeah? That's awesome. I think so. We got A to the J, we got Steph, we got Life Fans. Sweet. Kitch Cat's in the That's house. That's awesome. Kitch Cat's uh, celebrating her six months subscribing. What? It's pretty That's sweet. pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so... Man, we have some good stuff going on. This is, I'm so excited because this is our first uh, event for Sketch to Animate. And uh, man, what an, we're getting an overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, <laughs> I can't even, very, very positive response from people. And um, which I'm really, really excited about. And, uh, the, the slots are filling up fast. So if you know anyone that wants to take on the space, uh, you know, take, take this event class, it's, it's going to be jam packed. Um, come about two, a couple of weeks before the actual event, we're all going to get together, Wink and I and Anita, we're all going to sit down and really compile all of the information that we need. We're going to dip, triple check, double check PDFs, get PDFs ready, uh, make sure that we can record this event. So everyone will have access to that. Um, we just got, in a, and I'm going to announce this to Wink, we just got Wacom to, uh, uh, they're going to help promote us for this event. Uh, they're going to do whatever they can. Sweet. And they are offering something for those who are going to uh, sign up. Um, they are going to give us a 10% uh, discount starting the, of the day of the, the event. I think it's going to go for one month after the event. Uh, they're going to be, give us, it's, it's not a huge thing, but it's, it's the fact that they've, they, they acknowledge sketch to animate, 
Um, they like what we do. I've done an event with them and, and um, I have a really good relationship. Wink also has a good relationship with Wacom. Um, and they're going to give us 10% off for their Wacom One that's coming, that's out now. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Wacom One, check it out. It's actually a great starter um, tablet for those who are on the budget. And it's a 13 inch screen that can attach to certain phones even. Um, Android phones, not Macs, but Androids. Um, I think the Galaxy Note and some of the, uh, the, the, the LG 6 uh, it can attach to and also it attaches to your PC or Mac. But if you want to um, get a Cintiq, but like, you know, you can't afford it because it is expensive, uh, we're going to be getting a 10% discount on that starting. Anyone that signs up will get a 10% discount for that um, product that particular product, because they understand that a lot of you that are joining this class are on a budget. You know, you, uh, they're, they're really trying to push for, uh, prod, you know, products that are good for, for, you know, first time users, um, students, uh, people on a tight budget. And, uh, I think that's pretty awesome. And the price point was pretty good. So it's a uh, 399, I think for the Wacom one. And uh, it's 10% off that. I think you get like $40 off or something like that. I don't, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So that's, that's good. Plus they're going to promote us, which is even better. So, so there you go. Um, so I hope you guys like that idea. Um, but check out, um, Wink, why don't you put uh, the link to the Wake Up One in there so people can check it out and see what it is. Um, and again, $3.99 versus, you know, uh, you know, the Cintiq that I have here, of course, you know, I have, I have the top of the line stuff just because it's my, my livelihood. So I invest in that. Um, you can, you can go ahead and take a look at it, you know, for the, for the longest time. I mean, I think I was one of the first, I had one of the first Cintiqs and that lasted me over 10 years, actually the first one that I had. So that that's for a, a computer. <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, you yeah. So uh, their their products are really strong, and and of course uh, I love their pens. But I think what's cool is that what I was looking at is like the the Note, the Galaxy Note has a Wacom pen that you can buy to work on the on the screen, right? I I, I can't hear you. You're muted. I don't know how to set. I was them talking to Alexa. Oh, <laughs> you were talking to Alexa. That's so funny. Well, anyways, so uh, so that's all great news, and I'm I'm just excited that we were able to kind of uh, get that opportunity. And of course, they're you know we're hopefully going to work with them in the future. Um, I wanted to talk to them about doing another live. Event. If you guys don't remember, I did a free uh, event for them. A three it was a three um, three day three week. It's like one day for three weeks, um, I was doing an event with them on just the basics of what I do and talk about story and story development. So, which is cool, cool. Also, Wink, are we going to have a t-shirt soon? That's the big question. We are. That is the big question. Because I want to have a, my goal is to have the t-shirts ready and available before the event even starts. So anyone that doesn't go to the event but wants a t-shirt, um, can get an opportunity to see that t-shirt. Um, should we share what the t-shirt looks like yet or no? No, not until I have it in my hands. <sighs> okay. You're going to like physically hold it up in the screen. I'm going to like boom. Boom. Like, sure. Or you're just going to wear it. You're going to be the first one to wear it. Cause it's all going to Wink's house. Wink's in Alabama. Yeah. So I don't get the, he gets the shirts and then he's going to ship all the shirts. One to me, one to Anita, one to Zula. So by the events time, we'll have the shirts that we'll be wearing. But I have to say the shirts look pretty cool. They are pretty yeah, amazing. I mean, that I, you know, I, I was pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. So any, any news for you, Wink, on your end? Um, just made an app. Uh, if anyone lives in California, uh, I just did some work with Six Flags and West Coast Customs on the first ever drive through car show. And so I helped make some content for that. So that was super awesome. And then, uh, oh man, I'm making a couple like uh, 
some little creative direction consulting. So that's been a, that's been fun over over the past week, and uh, just uh, spending time with the family. It's been good. That's that's that is super dope fresh. Um, super super dope, super, super dope fresh. So uh, we do have drawovers, by the way. So we, we got we got inundated. We we had a priority for one, and I'm trying to remember who it was again that we we were prioritizing. Uh, the first one to do our our drawover. Do you remember? It would be the oldest one in your inbox in your mail. Let's see here. Let's look at my mail because Overton sent me something which is cool. Overton actually had sent me something last week after the event got over, uh, after the Twitch live stream was done, and I actually went and did a draw over for him right after that. Um, mm -hmm. So he sent me an updated thing of that and asked if I could maybe do a draw over of that. So I, we might be able to do that as well. Let me uh, take a look at my email real quick and see what we got in there in terms of... Uh, I just had an awesome idea. What, 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 what was last week, by the way? What, what day was last week? Last Monday. What, last Monday? What was the date? Yeah, what was the date? The 22nd. 22nd. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to switch, go back to the 22nd. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. What was February 22nd? Mason. So we got... Where is it? So what, based on the little sketch you just did there on the screen, uh -huh. what if you drew different animals as seahorses? Different animals as like a cross, like a cross between a, a pig and a seahorse, and a zebra and a seahorse. Like, what would they look like? <laughs> well, this is this this is a uh, alligator seahorse, I guess. Well, I was just thinking, like, uh, I think that'd be fun. Hmm, that's that that's <laughs> interesting. I was just doing a quick doodle while I was trying to um, talk to you guys. But I mean, of course, that yeah, they, they, you could that could totally, we could totally do something like that. But uh, where? No, just screw the crazy things on the top. What of the, the head, heck that, that was all. is? I have Overton's. It was it was Overton. Overton was the no. One there was somebody who asked for the critique, and his stuff came in just at the end of the last show. Uh, and so, let's see here. Was it just Overton? No, I thought it was somebody else. I thought it was some uh, somebody else. Was was it anybody else? Well, Steph, Steph said it might have been Tune, but, but, but I trust Life Fantasy too. Oh, but Overton. Overtune isn't Overtune? Or, yeah, Overtune. Isn't Overtune yeah. Overton? <laughs> Overton Lloyd? Yeah, sorry, it's Overton. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're just being old and and can't figure out how to say someone's name. We. I said we. Okay. All right. Good. Good. So you're saying uh, a pig? If we did a, if we did like a. Like what would a seahorse version of a pig look like? Let's see here. Uh. Seahorse version of a pig. There you go. How about that? I'm on the delay, but let me let me see. I see, I see a head. Well, here I, I can share it ears. with you. Now that we now we're, we're in, I can share you with you what I'm doing. Start sharing. There you go. Now you can see me live. No one else can. Oh, per I love I love the live. Okay. So. Um, was was it? I, I forget that. Uh, why am I forgetting what a seahorse? Uh, seahorse. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's right. 
it, it, cur it curves. It curves. It curves. It curves. It curves. So, yeah, then, then we would reverse this guy. So you got a you got a pig seahorse. You got an alligator, seahorse. A sea hog. <laughs> a sea a sea hog. I see what you did there. Yeah, let's see here. We got we got um. I guess we mash it up. You wouldn't have hands he would have the little I mean I could I could create like looks like fins that are more like his reptilian claw fins that'd be fun and then you've got uh... his look more like bull hooves there you go I love it <laughs> you got your little, you got your little hog, little hog there, little alligator tail. What's the other one? What's the, what's the other one we can do? Uh, that's that's one. I was thinking a zebra, but it could be anything. Uh, a zebra. A z okay, I guess it's kind of like a it, horse. It, already. It's, it's already a horse. Let's do a, a weird smash up of like, let's say. Um, uh, Steph said an armadillo. Uh, well, okay, armadillo. Armadillo would be. Little nose. How about that? Does that look like? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at seahorses right now. Let's see, what does see? What do a seahorse look like here? Okay. Uh, and yep. 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 That's funny. There you go. So you got you got an armadillo seahorse, armadillo alligator. What else? What else we got? What else we got here? Armadillo. Armadillo. Uh, I like. Oh, honestly, a penguin seahorse. A penguin seahorse. Oh, is... Let's see here. Scoot this over a little bit. Uh, I'm strategically trying to stay out of the way of our images. Oop. Strategic. Our, our, our pips. You messed up a lasso? Uh, no, I didn't. You didn't see that? You didn't see that? No. Let's see here. Uh, penguin. How about that? Is that is that good enough for you? I'm with it. Are you with that? With that one? Yeah. There you go. So, Over to you instead of a tiger or an elephant. Uh, well, you got an, uh, a tiger. Let's do a lion. Let's do a lion one. Let's... Or a bear. Oh my.
All right. Wow, you really, you guys are really setting me up with a challenge already. We haven't done we fun. haven't done these these challenges in quite a while. You need to push you out of your box. My box, my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who needs comfort zone? Uh, let's do this lion. <laughs> what, what was what what was that over 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 tune said tyrannosaur tracks <laughs> i just pictured it in my head that was funny You know, they all have tails, so, you know, we mm -hmm. can just make his little swoopy tail like this. His could be furry. Yeah, absolutely. You get, you get the little, little hair. Done. That's amazing. You should send me that picture so I sculpt it in 3D. What, that, all of these? Or just... Yeah, I'll sculpt them all in 3D. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Hold on. One more. One more. One more. We've got... Um, what was the other one? There's another one. Oh, Tyrannosaurus uh, elephant? Rex. Elephant or Tyrannosaurus Rex? Those are the two that came Well, the, the elephant would be, let's see here. It'd be a baby elephant seahorse. There you go. We got this. So much fun. Last but not least, there's the elephant one. Let's just do, I'm going to shrink these down just a little bit. Give me a little bit more room. Well, he would be smaller anyways. We'll put him up here. And this one would be slightly smaller. Make this one slightly bigger. Bring this one over. And then what's the last one? Tyrannosaurus? Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Rex. See, uh, 
I want to make sure I get a good picture of a Tyrannosaurus Rex so I can see in my head a what. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, Bruce, thanks for doing. I just decided that I thought what Travis drawing was fun to look kind of like a gator uh, seahorse mix. And then my wild head just started going in all sorts of directions, just naming animals, and then everyone else named animals, and then Travis kept drawing, and then it was a blast. So this is where we are. Now we're drawing a Tyrannosaurus Rex seahorse mix. It's fantastic. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm just. <laughs> what, what, why are we laughing? Why? Why? Your giant nose on the T-Rex. I feel like this needs to be a little bit like There we go. All right. So there you have it. You're, you got your you got your T Rex, seahorse. I am on so Twitch. You want to say hello? Oh hi. Hi. Goodbye. <laughs> hi. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't want to talk to you. No, thank you. No, no, no Twitch people. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye, buddy. There you go. All right, we got we got our. Uh, I know it's probably in the way. Uh, let's, let's bring him down. Let's bring him down so we can see him a little bit better. There you go. He's fun. I mean, you know, if you wanted to, like, you know, you could just do a square wedge like this. I'm not sure. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I was watching something the other day that I thought was pretty cool um, on, on our um, Discord. And somebody was drawing uh, based off of watching Aaron's tutorials on a uh, horse, uh, upshot of a horse. But uh, I was like, I recognized Aaron's drawings. Like, oh, that's that's cool. I thought, man, it would be neat to kind of, because uh, I, I, you know, talk about perspective and how things turn in space, which I think will lead us to 
what Overtune is, uh, what he had sent us uh, today to kind of take a look at. Um, but I've been also been doing these little, um, I don't know if Wink, you, you've been, if you wanted to share what I've been posting every day, um, are shots. And um, mm -hmm. and uh, if you want to maybe explain a little bit why I'm doing these shots, um, maybe you can even share a couple of those images or, or on the Discord. Uh, I'm not on the Discord, but on the Twitch. I don't know if there's links to anything or, or examples of stuff that I've been. But I've been I've been posting. The only reason I'm gonna take let him take over real quick is I gotta go to the bathroom. Um, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. I gotta have a restroom <laughs> break, man. I'm, I went from one meeting to another, and I was just like, "Okay, I, I, I my, my, my bladder is like, dude, no, dude, no, you no. gotta, you gotta, you gotta take care of this, quick." This is forever gonna live on YouTube. No, I it's great. It's uh, everyone, you know, like I said, no matter what in the world, no matter what conflict you're, in, just remember, everybody poops, and everybody pees. Those are words to live by. <laughs> Everybody poops, everybody pees. And when you I, know that, you go, you know I what? They, they could be the most powerful person in the world. But guess what? They still got to go to the bathroom. On that note, I'll be right back. Um, but it, yeah, share with them because I think it'd be cool um, to share with them the whole concept of what I'm doing, which is uh, I'm doing a shot every day. And we're gonna do our first paying tutorial, I think, on on that. You know, we were, you you brought this up the other day, Wink. So I I've been doing it. I've been doing a, sh a, a some sort of shot that's an essential shot that you should know as a story artist every single day. And I'm sharing that thing, and then we're gonna do a more comprehensive tutorial on every shot that you would need to know, or the the like the top fifty shots you need to have in your arsenal of shot reference for creating your own storytelling. Uh, whether it's a short series, comics, whatever. Hey, thanks for All teeing right. that okay. up, buddy. I gotta go. Right. I'll be right back. Use the <laughs> so, basically, going through the library, just kind of like what he talked about, was the library of shots. So, like, you know, over the shoulder, or the upshot, or the establishing shot, right? Just kind of generally going through uh, different famous shot names and different famous shots that were either created by certain directors or most famous for certain like films or whatever and building up a library of them and then going into like we're going to do a tutorial series where we'll take down those original like shot lists that he uh, comes up with and make them into tutorial series where we'll expand upon each of those shots techniques and advice for them uh, for you know 10 15 minutes per shot uh, so it'd be a, a longer like video package but I thought it was something really cool because we got into that discussion about like what shots are important who needs to know which ones why do you need to know them and uh, what is like your simple bread and butter because certain camera angles you'll see like reused all the time in every movie, blah, 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 right? And then there's certain ones that are like really impactful and why, right? And so getting into all that. But that's pretty much it. This is real fun with just me. It's like a blast. <laughs> I'm excited. I have these seahorses. I'm gonna I'm totally gonna take them into ZBrush tomorrow and sculpt them. That's like my thing. That. I think it'd be hilarious. You hear me? Yeah, it's good. All right. Yay, I feel better. Thank you. Back. Thank you, everybody. Back again. Thank you. Shady's Thank back. You. Tell tip, a your, friend. tip your waiter. Tip your wink. Tip, tip your wink like <laughs> Winky wink. So how many people we got in the house today? How many? 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 We're never gonna look at All right, 15, 15 that's not bad. I mean, you know. Oh, we've been averaging that lately. So uh, let's see here. I'm gonna color this in real quick. So you explain the whole shots and what we're doing. So do me a favor. Yeah. Anyone, uh -huh. the, the, the whole 15 of you that are in here, is uh, share that, in, you know, share that sure. information with other people. 
um, meaning the shots. If you see something on, on my Facebook or Instagram, um, share it with others, you know, because I kind of just want to spread the good word of storyboarding, the importance of storyboarding. <laughs> it is, it is important. important. It's the basis for everything that we do visually in animation. I like that you're going to noodle on this well, for a minute. Give me more material to work with. I'm just going to give you, you know, I, I figure if you're going to sculpt it in ZBrush, you might as well see what it looks like in a general, like, shaded kind of vibe. I have a visitor who showed up. What's up, buddy? Oh, who is it? Is that is that your son? Yep. Thank you. Daddy. Daddy. Yes. Um. I can't see the room, but I do one on this game for a basic. <laughs> Hold on, let me have the conversation. Daddy, why do you ignore me? I'll why do you back. ignore me, Daddy? <laughs> All right, wait. You, okay, they're having a conversation. <laughs> All right. Anyways, enough of that. So I'm I'm just gonna put in something really quick for him, so he can have at least some kind of reference to kind of go off of. Um, this is fun. It was fun doing these. Maybe I'll, I'll do more of a polished one of these, um, at some point. At least I'll give you, I'm, this is my, um, actually these are going pretty fast, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Like yeah. They went quick. I didn't noodle them or I'm not. I'm trying not to. No. Trying not. Trying not to. It's a hard thing for Travis to, to not do. noodle. To not not noodle. I like the doodle. All right, so let's let's go to this one. <laughs> I think your elephant one's the most derpy. He looks silly. Well, all the other ones make sense. He has a funny face on. He started to look a little like Tantor when you first started drawing him. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess that makes sense. So... All right. There we go. It's almost like you've got many years and professional experience drawing elephants. Can't imagine where that came from. Can't imagine. Cannot even <laughs> imagine. All right, so. If we have anyone new in the house, shout out, say hello. We'll tell you all about Travis and his his wild career and doing amazing things. His wild and crazy and wacky Actually, career. It's weird. It is weird. weird. I actually recently got this brand new like pack of uh, post-its. I guess not brand new pack. I've had them like in the cabinet forever, but I opened them and they have some awesome colors. Like look at this like teal. Super Wait, sweet. from what? I'm post. I'm post it guy. I like post it. Oh, it's post it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I thought you were like sharing like Prismacolor colors or something. No, I. I mean, would anyone like to see my Prismacolor collection? I had them all. Do you have a large collection of Prismacolors? I. I'm. I'm pretty sure I actually own every Prismacolor they make. Uh. Okay. Or have ever made, or I have ever got made. This, uh, because they recently, uh, a mean, couple of years I, I ago, they I made some. I guess I couldn't say they that. They made some uh, appropriate they... changes to their. Um, <laughs> uh, colors. They were a little, little. Uh, they made them more PC, I, I, which I thought was kind of funny. I think I told you this before. They no there was so there was a skin tone, and they and they. Um, Trying to remember what was the skin tone. It was, um, 
Oh, it was it went from um Cho Cho. Yeah. What was the skin tone and prismacolor that they changed from toast to something else? Oriental. Then now we're toast. Now it's switched to toast. Yeah. The, co the color was oriental, then they got switched to toast. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have. I have the giant uh, Prismacolor marker set, but then I also have the complete set of uh, uh, Copics. Oh, you have the complete set of Copics. No, okay. Now the Copics is what I could go. I could be down with. Um, I've got this book that I plan on doing, and we might do maybe do a live stream. Uh, I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start filling this up. I'm going to start doing pen and ink and watercolor. That's going to be my new, that's going to be my yeah. next thing, pen and ink and watercolor. Because I love, my favorite thing, medium, was watercolor um, with color pencil. I love uh, watercolor. I would do watercolor and color pencil. That was my, that was my jam. And so I'm going to start doing that again. I'm going to start Perfect. doing a whole, I think I'm going to start doing a whole series of sketches uh, of maybe, I don't know if I want to dedicate that to one specific story, that, that sketchbook. And then just, and then after mm -hmm. that's over, um, just work on it little by little and just uh, build up the story and then uh, the comic, make it sort of like a, a living, breathing, organic comic book. And then maybe that, later on, if once it fills up, maybe I'll sell it. Who knows? Not the book. Maybe just mm. do a print of it and then sell that. Yeah. That could be fun. So here you go. I'm doing your, your little... My little family of animals. Your little family of animals. 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 Alright. So I am turning this into a drawing session of seahorses. Thank you very much. You know what this you're my last meeting. I, I mean, I know that everyone else. Well, I had this Lytra meeting, sure. and uh, in the Lytra meeting, they were talking about giving away, um, you know, X amount of dollars to any Lytra artist that wants to do a challenge. And the challenge was doing a fairy, um, doing a fairy. But then uh, it was a smash up of like, you know, a fairy alligator. So I started drawing that fa that alligator, and then you just said seahorse, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I switched it to seahorse. But it was originally it was going to be an alligator alligator that was a fairy. So. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah, but no, it doesn't have to be. But no. Let's see here. There you go. How was that? How's that? I love it. Is this enough for you to go off of? Just enough. Just enough information to do this. <laughs> Over to me and said, dude, you should pitch these characters to Netflix. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what do we call them? The animal horses, animal crackers. Brush. <laughs> Brush mechanics said, I'd love to have better control and ink markers. Uh, where'd you get the book, Travis? Uh, the book, actually, Aaron bought it for me when he was here. And we were down downtown Pike Place Market. And somebody was selling it at the little Sunday market and down at Pike Place. And so it was cool. 
he bought that. Is and the paper is okay. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna make it work because um, you can make anything work. So, but yeah, right. I ended up getting at Pike Place Market. So let's see here. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do uh, this. Make this bigger. There you go. I'm just putting a shadow tone real quick. Shadow tone for this. Uh, it's awfully quiet again. People getting bored. Like we want to see some, no, we want to see some so. drawovers, man. Don't give me your, don't, don't give yeah, me your seahorse jargon crud. I don't want to see no Tyrannosaurus well, horse, Tyrannosaurus horse, Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus. Throw that, throw that slack when you're done or later huh? or whatever. Throw that in the slack later or something, whatever, so I can have it. Oh, uh, okay. All right. We can do that. I can make that happen. And let's add a little soft highlight. A little soft highlight here. A little softness. Soft highlight. You're funny. Well, that's the that's the layer. It's called soft highlight. Yeah. Soft or soft light. Soft. I light. call it. It's. I'm using it for my highlight. Point. All right, we're done with this. We'll save this out as... We're done. What are we, what are we saving this as? It's all over. Save project as... Sure. Documents, sketch and animate, draw over Mondays. Where are you, draw over Mondays? Where, oh, there you go. And then we'll call this uh, Seahorse Smash Up. Seahorse. Seahorse. Seahorse Smash Up. Water warriors. <laughs> there you go. All right, now we got we now we got our, our collection of animals, animals. We can name them at a later date. And in that place, it's not bad for uh, for what twenty five minutes, thirty minutes, twenty five minutes. All right. An hour, but it's fine. We started at six thirteen. I talked for like twenty minutes, and then I had to use the bathroom. Then I drew. Well, we drew and then I used it. <laughs> oh, yeah, like actual, actual drawing, drawing, drawing time. time. Okay, so let's get to Overton's here, shall we? I know Overton's like, can you guys just be quiet and get to my crap, please? Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, uh, thank you. Where is it? Uh, inbox. 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 All right, 
let's get to this. So we've got um, oh, look at all the stuff you sent. So it says, hey Travis, here's an upgraded skull animation. It's super high rough. Was wondering if you could show me your approach to simplifying complex images into simple shapes on the draw over. So uh, it looks like it was sent from an iPad. Were you doing this in your iPad, Overtune? Uh, let's see here. He's right here. He's chatting. Let's find out. Yeah. Well, uh, here's a reference from ZBrush. Okay. So he was using ZBrush. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can. Do I download this? How do I? If he's using ZBrush, he can't use his iPad. Download that. Mm-hmm. Opening that up. All right, let's let's do this loop. Let's see let's see what he's got here. Loop. So um so just to so just so I I'll share this real quick. Uh hopefully you guys can see this. Can you guys see this okay? Uh no, we can't see anything you you're doing except for Photoshop. Oh, because I only share um Wait, no. Overton said he did it in Calipeg. Oh, he did it in Calipeg. That's awesome. Okay. That's great. Good to know. Calipeg it is. So iPad. So the, you guys can see this. So this. So Overton last week sent me this uh, skull. I think it was supposed to be a coyote skull or something. Um, and we can look at the coyote skulls uh, in a minute. I'll pull some stuff up so we can kind of take a look at it. But he wanted to draw something in shape. So I drew over him, over his, in a very simple format on how you guys can do a turnaround with a complex um, uh, design, such as like a skull, in a very simple format if you're going to do it traditionally. And so... Everyone's different in how they approach things. I just treated it like I treat it like anything else. I treated it like a turntable and I, and finding a center point. So what I did is I went in and I took his drawings because his drawings were turning, but they were sliding. So it wasn't turning in space symmetrically. Um, so as it was turning, he was animating it. It was kind of doing this pop, pop. So it was sliding. So the, the one of the first things I did is was talking about the rule of what you can do. And maybe I could just share that. Let's, let's see. Let's take a look at what he did do um, after that discussion. And he did a ZBrush pass of it. So here's, here's his turn right now. So for the most part, it's working. There's still a little popping at the very top and, um, of the skull, the cranium right there. It gets a little small and big. But for the most part... It's working. There's certain little little bits here and there getting shrinking and growing, but nothing too major, nothing that can't be fixed. So if you notice, even in this one, if it's it might be light, see that turntable that is at the bottom. What I did was, and maybe I can just I'll I'll grab it. Um, we'll pull this to the side. Um, I'm gonna shrink this up a little bit. So Overton sent me this, these images, um, and I shrunk it down so you guys can see it. So he did this turntable and ZBrush. And so um, what I told him to do was this, take, draw out a sphere in perspective, right? If you're going to do a turnaround and then draw crosshairs, do a crosshair and then do another crosshair. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight poses. And you draw straight lines and you find a center point. And that's that center point you see here on the screen. You see, um, let's see here, where is it? Why is this not getting bigger? Oh, that's why. So if you look at this, in, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but there's this, there's a straight up and down line. And then there's these orange crosshairs. Is that orange? Um, color, wink, no, green. Okay. Green. Those are green. All right. The, so the green crosshairs 
those are gonna be the points that you're gonna block your things out. You're gonna first start with a front view, a side view, you're gonna flip the side view, reciprocate it to the other side, and then you're gonna do a back view. Now, because this thing is organic and it's a skull and it's gonna look different in all different angles, you're gonna mirror, you're gonna cheat by taking the front view and then pulling that down on a transparency and then drawing what the back view would look like in proportion of that to kind of keep your things relatively the same. So you're gonna create, out of three drawings, you're gonna be able to create four poses. And then from there, you're going to do in-betweens, the next breakdowns on over those crosshairs, those green lines, the in-betweens will be there. So you'll have end up with eight poses. And then from there, you can in-between it however you want. So I was just trying to show the, the basic approach to how you can block something out relatively simple in a short amount of time. Now the, 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 the trick to anything like a skull as advanced as a skull is understanding the, the anatomical structure of the skull. So let's, let's find a, I think it's a coyote. I'm not sure if it was a coyote uh, skull. Let's pull that up real quick. Uh, or is it a dog skull? Tell me, Overton, uh, what it was. Was it a, a coyote? A um, we're gonna open up the the thing that I drew for him earlier. Oh. He had said a wolf or oh, canine skull. Oh, okay, wolf skull. or canine skull. All right, got it. Um, so, and I drew a generic shape because I wasn't looking at any reference. I was just going over what he had already drawn. And I said, well, let's push the pose this way. Uh, let's see here. Drover Mondays. Drovers, Overton Skull. Uh, we'll pull that up. Okay, so this was the note that I basically gave him. And this is what I'm gonna share with you guys. Uh, so uh, at the top, uh, at, at first I said, I like to draw this as a guide for myself to keep things centered and in proportion. Um, th this is, again, these are good notes to have. Um, like I said before, the lines are, if you look over to the right, it says the lines are for your key positions for the skull rotation. The center point is going to be where you're going to, keep the, the skull centered so it doesn't slide back and forth. And you're always going to find that center point. Um, and you're going to kind of create that as a reference. So on, on number two at the top, which you can't read, um, let's see here. Let me get rid of this, hide this for a second. Okay, at the top of this, and I will um, drag it down. It says, I've tried to adjust your existing drawings to match the center line by determining the center of your skull. And then three, I put, use the crosshairs to build your key skull positions um, from, from the, the, and I, I, I put from, and I stopped there. I, I must have, uh, from the, the first drawing that you, the profile here that you have, find that center point and then stick to it. And then, um, on the, in the blue here, I said, then I am blocking out the simple shapes, which you can draw over to draw over the, to the animal you were intending to draw. So I'm, again, I was looking at doing this without reference. I was just simply going over what he had. And I, and I put in disclaimer, I'm not looking at reference, just showing you my process. And I said, definitely follow reference. So that's what we're going to get to next. So after I did this, um, then I drew, we'll get to the next one. Then I drew the front view of it. And then again, finding the center, you know, finding the center point and keeping with that. So let's say I want to put another layer on top of this. Actually I do it right there. Why is that just, okay, there we go. So, you know, let's say this would be the center point of the skull and then so the X marks the spot. So this, the skull would be there. So 
and that's going to be a good reference to know like right above the, the, the forehead right around here is where I'm keeping the center point for the skull, which is right there. And then I, what I did is all I did was I took the, the reverse of the, the first drawing, the first profile, and I put it, I reversed it and I, and I matched the center for it on this side. And then I took the front drawing, right? And again, with the crosshairs going horizontal, like these blue lines going horizontal, I knew exactly where my height was. Then I did a back view of it, which is right here. Now the trick is, is trying to find the back view while retaining the same proportions as the front view, but because it's a back view and things are, you don't, uh, things, things are in the back are different than the things are in the front. You don't see the eye sockets, but they're there. Then you have to draw out this, the way you need to draw it intricately. So I like to look at, you know, find skulls that online and that might have a general idea of what a back view of a skull looks like, the front view, top view, whatever I can gather from my information to give me enough reference to, to draw out what I'm going to do. But I would always say, no matter what you do, is block it out in simple geometric shapes and then as your first light pass and then go over that with the details to keep the things in proportion. So from there, it, it spins, you know, it, it has a general idea of the spinning. And you notice I'm also keeping the, the um, I'm following the lines. I'm keeping these lines right here and right here, here and here. That's going to be the center point of the skull. So wherever that skull is. So if that, if that skull is right here and the jaw is here and the eyes are here and you got the nose. And let's say the center point is right here. We're looking down on it. It's it's always going to stay the line. It's always going to stay centered where, on that whatever line that is, whatever line that's going to be. It's always going to stay centered. So that's your centering for your perspective to make sure that it falls in perspective. And then also having the disc. You know, think of the disc as like a cylinder with a center point and the lines going this way. And now you can use, literally use the cent, you know, use this as a grid for how far like this goes out and this goes out. Um, find, find those points of interest of where this would go and this would go and then start spinning it around. Now, all of this is going to take practice because you're also turning things in space, traditionally drawing them. Uh, unlike what he was doing with ZBrush, you could do that in ZBrush, but if you're going to do this traditionally, the hard, the hard part is, is understanding how those shapes turn in space and, you know, you're faking the three-dimensional feel. How does, how does a skull brow like this from the front view look like from the side view? You know, is, is this, you know, is this more the front? This is uh, this is this is more of the side right here. This is more of the front view right here. And then, how does it look when it turns in space? You know, what what how does how what's the difference of of that skull shape as it turns in space? Because it's it's going to probably look something like this as it's turning away from you. This this I'm talking about this shape right here because it's going in, and then it's going to reverse itself at some point because this this curve here is going to go is going to be this curve here reversing it as it's turning in space so it's gonna be tricky when you do this, this is a complex turning a, a skull in in three dimensions traditionally is a hard thing to do that's why i always say keep it simple start with simple geometric shapes and then draw over those geometric shapes with your curves and your your things like that because Again, when you do, let's say, um, I'll go to back over here and I'm going to look up the, does this make sense to you, Wink, so far? Do you have any questions, Wink? I can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? 
Because I'm oh, okay. smart. There you go. So basically, uh, yeah, no, uh, what it, it makes a lot of sense, and I really like um, Overtune saying those cheekbones are crazy, uh, and that he was basically like it's an extension of your brother's yes. tutorial. And Brush Mechanics was saying how this is the first time the turnarounds have ever made sense. I I think it's a great way to like talk about it and teach it. So it's really nice that you share well, that with everybody. Okay, so um, so see this this Google thing see my idea came from the fact that a lot of times you see them posted on these little stands and i'm like going well that stand is the center point it's going to have the center balance of where that thing is for it to in order for it to stay and and so this is a wolf yeah. this would be a gray wolf um what he has what he's looking at right there so let's let's do a real gray fox that's a gray fox skull uh here is a a wolf skull right here. Let's we're gonna try to find uh, a wolf skull and see what we can do in terms of images. Let's see if we can find something that's good here. Um, but it's just the only way. The, if you, if something's so complicated like a skull, the only thing you can do is to go backwards and reverse and simplify it in order for things to stay in proportion. So, um, let's see, Wolf Skull and Etsy. Uh, see if that pops up. Viewpoints. Okay, look, here you go. Look at this. Fox Skull Anatomy. Uh, we'll just go with a fox for now. Just so you can kind of see it. The fox is not going to be the same as, as, as that, but... Travis, what does oh, the fox wolf say? skull. Here you go. Here's a wolf skull right here. What does the fox say? Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Interesting. There you go. Um, uh, this needs to be more detailed. Let's see here. Uh, this is a wolf one right here, I think. There you go. Wolf one. So, wait, is this a wolf? I can't tell if that one's a wolf or not. It looks like it might be. So, uh, I've seen this site before, um, but uh, A to the J uh, shared a link with me and just reminded me. And I'll put it in the chat here, but. Uh, there's like this site where you can basically choose the species of uh -huh. animal, like deer, bird, dog, cat, and then it'll break down like the direction, and then you can just kind of spin the skull in different uh, axes. Well, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty uh, awesome. Yeah, what's that site? You said you. I just can you put it in my in the Skype chat room so I can go straight to it? Uh, yeah, put it in the yeah, Skype chat room so I can just go straight to it. Because then I, what I can do is I can show you how I would block this out using this kind of reference. Uh, let's see here. All right. You should, you should save that one for the amount of times you run. Yeah. This. Let me go. In. And I, I plan on starting to, I, I'm, what I'm going to do probably is, and like Aaron, I'm going to start collecting um, skulls, actual skulls, because I like to textually feel it, look at it. Um, I hate using reference all the time on online, but hey, it's it's the next best thing. Uh, bookmark this tab. All right. So, what? Okay, I see what you're doing here. So, is there a way to make this bigger? See. So you pick the. Well, you already. It looks like you already picked it. Right. So you can change the species. So you hit the drop down. And no, I got the wolf. Wolf here, which is great. But it's um. Right. What's cool is it's, it's showing kind of exactly what I'm talking about. If you wanted to, so I'm going to just, again, hopefully they scanned an actual wolf skull. So the back view of that skull shows a little bit of the, the eyebrow. And remember that the, the cheek, the cheek is going to come out, the, the eye socket 
is going to come out and then the, you have the cheek that comes in on either side and then the, your jawbone is what connects at the bottom that's your jaw underneath and then there, there's a little socket right here that the vertebrae, the neck vertebrae goes into um, and then so anyways uh, I'm going to try to find the only thing I don't like about this is it's very unrendered. Like, is there a highly, more highly rendered version of this? Or is this is just, I mean, it's great reference. Don't get me wrong. I love it. So what I was saying before. That's just, it's a, it's, it's just for proportion yeah. and skull reference. So, you know, you've got, you've got the cranium, the actual part of the skull that everything is sort of off of uh, coming off of this is where the brain sits right the little the brain sits inside this and then you you know the neck vertebrae is, which is in the back comes out and then um you know the vertebrae comes in like this and you got the tail right like something like that so in a simple terms that circle represents the back part this, then you have the little ridge on the top of the, the ridge here that comes up. And then you've got your, literally coming out from that is your eyes, your eye socket for that. But before you even get that, what I, what I like to do is, is think of a simple, you can think of this as a simple wedge shape even. So, and I'm going to get lighter here. Look at A to the J coming for the, with all the clutch saves. He's got another one here from Sketchfab of like a collection of skulls. Okay. Let me like, is it, did you send me one, do it on a Skype? Did you do it on the Skype? That's what I'm okay. doing. I'm doing. Okay. Okay, okay. So, that's also them uh, like high rendered. Oh, good, 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 good. Let's take a look at this. Oh That's yeah. Great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna shave this. Boom. My only concern is making sure that this is like an actual, based on an actual scan of a 3D scan of a of a skull. It looks like a skin. It looks like photogrammetry. Yeah. Like well, that's that's the only thing you'd. I want to make sure that you get you get the proper reference. But um, this one's much better. This is a much much better. Wow, Oregon State University. Oh, this is awesome. This is in Eugene of all places, which is I I frequent Eugene all the time. So, so what's really cool, and I'll share this, is um. That reverse, remember, the reverse of the eye socket, it's going to curve in, but as it spins around, it's going to reverse the curve, right? To show that it's moving in space. Now, the way, that, now the way they've designed this spinning, the spinning is spinning on that right cheek. The center point is that cheek. It's not centering. It's not, they're not spinning the 3D model centered of the skull itself. Do you get what I'm saying? Right now, right now, the way it yeah. spins, if I'm spinning it around, it's spinning around that cheek. So the center point is actually right here. If you can see my, where my hand is, that's where they put their, their pivot point is right here, which is fine, but it doesn't give you the true sense of a, of, of a proportionate things moving in space, but it gives you the idea of what I'm talking about when you draw something turning in space and you want to see that curve of the eye socket change, it's going from one angle and it reverses itself to give the illusion that it's spinning around in space. Um, the other part is the difficulty is like I would treat, um, like you look at the top of this, 
keep treat this as a circle. Like I would do a wedge like I did before. I'm, I'm gonna move this out. I'm gonna move this up away from this so I can go back to the drawing. What I find crazy is their skull doesn't connect in the back side of their eye. No, it doesn't at all. It, it, yeah, that's most most animals like that don't. Like it, look at look at almost every animal. Uh, I mean, look at look at humans. How how we uh, we're the only we're one of the few that like primates that have that sort of. Um, and even then, I don't even know if it fully it, you have the the full connection of the eye socket sitting in. Um, but a lot of the, the dog ones, they're all open. And even then, oh my God, that's weird. They've got, they've got this whole thing falling, uh, Oregon State University put the pieces, they all, as it's turning, it's animating, it's the pieces of the skull is pulling apart, which is kind of crazy. All right, let me go back to what we were looking at before. Wow, this is really cool. Thank you, Oregon State University. Wow, this is great. So again, what I said before, the turntable. This this general shape, yes. Oregon State is in Corvallis. Oh, that's Corvallis. What's the one in? It's Eugene. What's the one? University of Oregon. University of Oregon. Okay, got it. This is Corvallis. Ducks versus beavers. Ducks versus yeah, they're probably like getting horribly upset with me right now. Uh, Oregon State, it's Corvallis, it's not far. Like an yes. Hour so again, I would treat, in terms of wanting something like this to work in space, I would treat this like a wedge. And then you have your circle, right? And that's that's going to be basically where your... your um, where you, the, the back of the skull is going to be. And then from there you can start designing this. So if you looked at if you looked at this wedge like this, if you put your the skull basically like this, you can start designing your stuff. But what this does though is it helps you find your center point easy, and you can start. St this is much easier to turn in space, let's say, than your. Um, than a highly detailed render if you start rendering it out. So it's all about blocking out simple geometric form. And then um, from there, you know, you have your, let's see here, I'm gonna go a little darker, a little thinner. Um, I'll just go black, forget that. Let's go up and go black. So from here, you're gonna have your skull and your cheek Right, your your eye. I'm sorry, your eye socket right here, and then your eye socket right here, and then uh, this is sort of going to be where your your cheek bone is going to spin around in space, and then connect into. That circle. Again, you don't have to go fully detailed with this. You can keep it as simple as you want. Um, but the idea is not to overcomplicate yourself when you're first doing a, a, a turn like this. And then from there, you know, of course, at the end of this, this is where the wedge would go. This is where the, the cranium would go and the cheeks, the cheek would go right there. But do you see how I'm building off of this? Wink, do you see that? Oh yeah. That looks great. And it the 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 how you're explaining to build it up from like the simple shapes and forms is like huge. I'm gonna erase this real quick because I wanna make a clean slate on this. Uh so let's let's move this out of the way. Actually we'll delete that. Let's get this over here. So 
from that space, I can now think about where um, now I can I can start pushing my shapes a little bit more with this. The challenges are going to be the sh turning the cheek and the eye sockets in space uh, in three dimension, and also knowing like like this, there's a shape that happens inside um, that connects like this whole the nostril, the nose, this part right here, this this center point goes straight in, the breathing goes down, and there's a hole underneath and there but there's a center point between the two eye sockets there's there's where the brain also sits right in there and um this space is what gets a little complicated in here so from there i can i can just start blocking my shape out and i can put in my teeth Uh, the canines kind of come out. And then we got the other teeth going right here. The molars are right here. My other molars. And then the other the, the other tricky part is um, the shape of the jaw. The shape of the, the underlying part of the jaw. Um, if you look at, I'm going to see if I can spin around and look at it from underneath. The under, the under part of this jaw is really interesting because it, it, it curves, it kind of does a slight, uh, curve like this. If this was the front. Um, your you have your teeth going up and then everything's curving and then there's a little underneath the part this is where the it's got this little little half thing where the uh, the neck vertebrae goes into and then you've got your um, mm -hmm. It sort of rests in here, and then underneath is where your your cranium is, your eye socket. So your eye socket kind of goes. Uh, let's see here. This is the the eye socket and the cheek. The cheeks go out. Now we're looking at this from the bottom. The eye, the eye sockets go out, and the eye sockets are coming in. So underneath, this is all skull, and the palate. The you know your palate that's above you, that's right here. And then the, um, what's cool is that those teeth on the top, the top cane, all the top teeth sit over the bottom teeth. So they, the, the, they sort of wedge in. So those teeth kind of nice when they clench down, the, the top teeth go over the teeth that are underneath, but then the teeth underneath go over um, the front teeth. So, there, so it has this nice tearing clenching ripping uh, form that it does because of how it 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 perfectly goes into one another um, all of these shapes though when you're designing and you're drawing a wolf really go into play when you're when you're wanting to do a wolf expression and you know the mouth opens up of a wolf or a dog for that matter you know if it, if the you know mouth opens up it's going to have a slight curving in and a slight curving out right here and a slight curving in right here because this this part fits into this part Anyways, so a little bit of science really helps that. So again, by just building out this, I'll bring it back down again. Now we'll 
I'll do a little color. So again, based on this, this, the shape of the, the skull, the way I kind of draw when I'm rendering or when I'm drawing a wolf or any, any kind of dog like animal, um, I tend to always start with a circle, um, or in, in, you know, like in the hyena sake, uh, for like, a, let's say the hyena, I always like to draw just erase it. It's fine. Yeah. I just, I always erase. <sighs> Why? What's wrong with that? No, just destroy it. It's cool. on video. Everyone can see it on video. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's the, the shape of a hyena, right? With the, the big jaws and the, the, and then there's the wolf. Wolf. You have the circle, and then you bring in the wedge. And then I can start building my shapes. Off of that. In terms of how I'm going to uh, approach a, designing a character in cartoon, and it, like you know, des designing mm -hmm. anything for that matter, I always think I'm always thinking in simple geometric shapes. Um, and then kind of figure out that that's what helps me figure out my volumes as I'm getting, as I'm doing this a lot more and I'm trying to teach, I'm realizing there's a lot that I forget that I cheat around that I don't spend the time to do. And the more, if I spent more time doing it, I think my proportions will be better. So I'm always going back to these idea of geometric shapes to kind of, and then I, then I throw in like this light color in here to kind of create the form so I can, so it helps me define the shape a little bit better. Then I start adding tone to it, just so I can I can get that feel of what I'm trying to get across better. Yeah, I love going back to the basics, like going back and just kind of going through like what would be taught and making myself do it as well. Really helps like sharpen that tool just a little more. Yeah. So now, like, like so now, back. what Overton's doing and the point of of this exercise of turning something in space, you know, turning something that's this sort of shape design. Versus, you know, looking up at it. You know, this, this isn't, you know, looking up, looking down. Uh, now I can start, I can start taking this. From a different angle. Now I can start blocking this out, right? Now, now I know that, okay. Um, I can quickly block out something really simple. Let me do this real quick.
And now, based on those little things right there, I'm gonna knock those down just a little bit. Now I can just go right over that. And let's look at, let's look at a nice wolf. I'll pull a wolf example out. Uh, wolf. Images. So now I know that um, just even based on this this design right here, I can, I know that somewhere in here is going to be my. Let's do it this way, go smaller. Um, my nose is going to be somewhere in here. My mouth. right here, the jaw, line is right there. I know that my cheek sits right right in that area, so I, and then my, my eyebrow is right here. So now I can kind of build off of that and I can start putting in my, my eye. I know that uh, these things are building the the fur that sits the fur that comes out, and the ears are right here. And now I can kind of go in here. Start building out my shape. I'm, I'm going back to like, again, geometric shapes to kind of show you how you can build. It's easier to see, once you see that it's first it's quick to draw down, put down fast. And then it's, it's even better because from there you can, those, that underdrawing of the blocking keeps things in proportion to one another. As you, as you building something out in, in a three dimensional shape and you want to be able to see what it looks like. Overton just said, uh, this is priceless information. I just tweaked it out. That's awesome. Oh, I just tweeted it out. Nice. The little birdie said so. <laughs> so. Again, I'm just blocking. And then let's just add one more layer.
So, do you, do you see what I'm doing, Wink? Oh, definitely. I mean, it was great. Okay. I just want to make sure I'll... Uh, although I'm drawing here. Sorry. I'm, I got to bring it down. The way you're building up the exterior forms and shape off of the structure of basic geometric shapes that then create the skull after a skull study and then be able to like go from there to create the forms that create the flesh and the fur i imagine help everyone greatly well you can apply this to any kind of any kind of creature um oh yeah you know, anything really so you, you know the the mm -hmm. I teach you well let's see you go back down to this So knowing knowing that like this mouth the the mouth of the wolf will be here and I'm looking at a, you know I'm looking looking at wolf reference but I'm not at this angle I'm just trying to build off of what I already have um based on uh you know the eye is going to be right about here it's looking up that's the cheek and the eyebrow and You know everything kind of all the like the under fur kind of spreads out like this again looking at uh let's see ear So then I can go back into that, add some color to it. Mm, not that much. I'm just, I can block out my details from there. Building off a strong foundation. That's that's the whole that's the whole point of this, right? 
It's, yep. You have to have a starting point, a foundation. Everything starts with a foundation. Without a good, strong foundation, your your anything, a building will fall apart, and your artwork will fall apart. It won't hold up. So you've got to you've got to build that strong foundation to build everything, the the structure of it. You know, the same with you know that's that that shot right there versus. Um, all right, I've I've done this now. Um, again, it's like. And then this shot right here. You know, this is where the, the eyes, you know, this is looking down on a wolf. That ear's a little funky right there. <laughs> yeah, it is quiet in here, but I mean, it's, it's like mesmerizing to watch me do this. It's super cool. Oh, I... Do you guys have any questions? I'm trying to find that. What oh, would make make sense? We're coming up on near the end, so yep. I want to make sure I get to cover anything you guys are wondering about this process as he finishes up this last head. That's right, it goes like that. I'm just looking at something. Just gonna block this guy out real quick. Perfect. No, you're perfect. Well, I mean, you're wrong. 
No, you're No, perfect. you are. Knowing that everything should fit into that simple wedge shape is very helpful. Because uh, someone came from Overton and... I think, uh, I'm confused by what Kodiak said. She said, hey, Wolf Hass, and then said, yeah, not Hass. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Neither do I. Totally confused. I think you should clarify. At any rate. That way we're all rate. not wondering what actually is happening. So, you know, <laughs> now... Again, the whole point of this, the, the version of conversation was to show you how to turn a skull in space. But we all know turning a skull is complicated. Um, but finding the simple shapes within the skull is what's going to help you see things better. You know, this is starting to look more like a fox more than anything. But... The, the distinguishing things between a fox and, a, and, a, and a, a wolf, I mean, one thing you should know about canines is that canines uh, have very little um, forehead. Like, we have a break right here. Lions have a distinct break, you know, have a distinct, distinct break in how their, their sh their, the shape of their skulls are. Uh, this There's practically no... Uh, break at all that the, um it, it's very subtle in terms of their forehead and their where their nose is <laughs> cody i clarified it was it was just happy to see wolves oh okay that was your that was your happy text yeah that was that was the ah! just spamming the keys so and then uh hd jumped in hey guys it's been uh busy at work today so only got to caught the last 15 minutes. Uh, but they're going to try and aim to get a draw over into us next week. All right. Sounds, that sounds awesome. So that's exciting. And, and again, you know, like, you know, this is, this is looking at how the slope of the wolf. Cheek is and the eyes right there. I was looking at a white wolf on this one. Overtune has an, uh, a favor to ask, which is, uh, can you throw the wedge shape only over your animation sketch so that way they can see like how the... Uh, yeah, let's do that real quick. And then and then we the got to one. go. We got to, to go. go. All right, so let's take... Uh, let's hide that. Let's go to the first one right here. Let's knock that down. So uh, for for the wolf skull, you know, I would I would probably do something like this. And then based on that, I can draw my my cheek, my nose, my teeth, the, the canines, the jaw. Does that make sense? I would draw a wedge oh, yeah. like that. And then if it was the front view. You're always welcome, Brush for Tanks. She thanked us for information. Yeah, always. Again, if it was like that, I would draw this.
knowing that's somewhere around there. HD, we're supposed to do them every Monday from 5 until 8 uh, Pacific Standard Time, which should be 8 until 11 Eastern. Um, Travis just had a little bit extra work today that kind of put him behind. Uh, yeah, um, um, uh, it's but, uh, we had to push the times back a little bit uh, due to my teaching schedule during the day. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to it's it's been a challenge just because I've got so much on my plate, but I always want to make sure I make time for everybody, um, especially with this. So and and this helps me anyways. I mean, it it really does like um, in terms of. how I can block out my, my wedge shape. Actually, it'd probably be a little thinner in here. At any rate, this is what I'm talking about by just drawing something loosely in there and spinning your wedge around. Does that help? Does that make sense? Anyways. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. I, I'm going to get, we're, we have to go. It's, it's eight Oh six. Um, I, I wanted to keep it. I'm trying to do a hard time off because I've got a lot, lot on my plate. Plus I'm getting up in the morning to go get my first vaccination shot. So that'll be fun. Um, at any rate, uh, yeah, thanks Overton for sending me this stuff, uh, Info for the Wolf. Um, it was actually really, really, really fun to kind of draw, like, different ideas for, like, how a wolf could be. Um, once, you know, may, may, I need to start drawing more wolves. I think that, that would be a fun thing for me to do. Every time someone, you know, like, Overton, you're doing this stuff, like, I, I really wanted to, like, focus on uh, doing some wolves or, you know... Uh, I think the the fairy thing, you know, the, the we start off with the alligator fairy that turned into the alligator seahorse. So challenging me once again on something new I haven't done before, which is cool. I like I kind of like all of that. But um, man, I just love drawing. I think is what it is. Wink. I just like learning new stuff. Yeah, it's good. It's a lot of fun. Goat. <laughs> yeah, awesome. and then from there, you know, you can really exaggerate things, right? Like how how does or simplify them? Good. Like I don't know. Anyways, I know Wink's very tired, so um, Wink's Wink's been working a lot lately. So, Wink, you need to take a break. I'm trying. I imagine there's a vacation on my horizon. It's called summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's called summer. All right. Well, look, with that being said, let's leave it on a, the seahorse special here. We'll leave it. Th we'll, we'll close it out with the seahorse. Um, I want to just thank Wink for taking the time to see us and hang out with us again for another Monday draw over. Thanks Overton for letting us draw over your stuff. And, um, again, if not, if as, as always let people know about our event coming up, which is, uh, March 27th. Some people thought it was over the weekend this past weekend. It wasn't. It's March 27th. You will be getting notified, um, uh, about a week or two weeks before the actual event with all of the information, the code and everything you need to, if there's any issues whatsoever, 
uh, let us know. Um, Wink, I, hopefully you'll fill it. Um, Anita needed some help on some customer service stuff to answer any of the questions that people have. Yep, I got it. And, uh, we'll you know, we're going to be getting a discount for the Wacom One. That's going to start the day of the event. I think it's going to go for a month. I, I got to double check that. But Wacom will also be helping and promote that. So um, we're, we're big fans of Wacom here, uh, Wacom products. So, um, you know, they, they've been really kind to us. And so now they're offering this nice little discount for the Wacom One, which is 10% off. Um, and also we shall, by that point, have t-shirt designs ready to go for people to buy on our storefront. Um, and then also check out my daily posts of storyboard shots, the essential shots you should have in your storyboard arsenal of storyboard um, cinematics. So uh, we're gonna hopefully do a tutorial based on those after all of this. So that'll be fun. We've got a ton of stuff I'm working. Oh yeah, I'm working on Aaron's project. Um, I'm working on another project and Yada yada. And then I'm, the the Warner Brothers project's going fantastic, so I'm having a lot of fun doing that. Uh, yeah, just just a great year. But I am a little burned out too. I have to say, I think I need a little bit R and R. My brain's gonna go it's go go <laughs> if I don't <laughs> if I don't take a break. We don't want no. that. We don't want. But that. Uh, actually, I like these these well, seahorses. I might take them to another level and and post them. But they're fun. Um, as a matter of fact, you know what I'll do? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna save this out. Save what is it? Save uh, export to uh, smash ups. Seahorse smash up. We're gonna draw over Mondays. Uh, single image, yeah. Single is do that, and let's. Uh, I'm gonna send it over to Wink right now. And Wink, if you want, maybe we can put it in the chat and people can grab it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you going. guys can do your own version of here. Here's a nice challenge. You guys do your own version. I'm gonna take these roughs and go with it. But you guys take these roughs and run with it. See what you come up with, and and tag us at sketchtoanimate.com. All right. So let's see here. Uh, I need to find this to animate. Uh, over Mondays. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking myself through my all of my folders. Uh, He's got the same. I, I do. I swear. I swear. To, there we go. I just just sent it to Wink. Wink should have it right about Perfect. now. There it is. There you go, guys. There you go. There's your there's your seahorse smash up challenge. Create a create a, a seahorse of your own. I'll I'll develop some of my own. You know these were those quick roughs. Uh, finish them off. Do them in your style. However you want to do them. Be fun. Tag us at sketchanimate.com. And uh, yeah, I know they're really simple and basic, but uh, I think you guys can have fun with this one. What do you think, Wink? That'll be fun, right? Wink's gonna do a ZBrush of them. Might as well have everyone else's. Use this as, a, like I said, a starting point. You know, these were quick roughs. Run with it. Conceptualize. This is your concept challenge. You know, if you were a character designer in the industry and somebody did a rough, they said, and the director says, okay, draw something like this. Now run with it. That's, there you go. Let's see what you come up with. Go. Cool. All right. That's, with that being said, let's, uh, right, let's say goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Bye. I'm going to, I'm going to, Switch. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta make sure I get this right. Can't do a proper good. You. Technical. Technical? All right. What? We're saying goodbye. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye. Guys. <laughs>